uh, God really dealt with my heart on that, uh, Brother Dan, that, uh, you know, we sometimes may try to influence or flourish and come up with things, that, and there's nothing wrong with that, that to spectacularly do things, but His Word will still get it done. And uh, I'm an evangelist. I, I go uh, to, into churches, and a lot of the churches I go in, it takes two days to get the preacher out of depression before you can even have meeting, and, and that's sad. I don't, I, I'm telling you the truth. It ain't, every place ain't like this camp meeting. And you go in and you uh, sometimes leave and wonder if you helped them, and only God can help, and we know that. But uh, it's an honor, and, and uh, so I'll just give you a simple thought that the Lord spoke to my heart uh, sometime back in Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. If you're able and you found your place, Stand for the reverence of the reading of the Word of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy soul from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. I just want to preach on this thought. Blessed because. Blessed because. Lord, we love you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for our fellowship, Lord, and thank you, God, now that you would Help us in, in what we are attempting to do, to share your word. Lord, we've heard great preaching. And God, we just thank you for that. It's nourishment to our soul. We love being preached to. And Lord, it's nourishment. And I thank you for that. So I ask you now to use your preacher just for a few minutes, God. And somebody needs help, Lord. I, I believe you can help them. I know you can. Maybe there'll be someone here that don't yet know you. And Lord, I'm not going to ask you, will you save them? Because I know you can. But Lord, I pray they would come and allow you to do that in their lives as you have done in ours. And we'll give you praise, glory, and honor for we ask it in Jesus' name. You may be seated. There's probably too many and numerous things to even begin to describe how we can bless the Lord. But I like the writer as he wrote here and, and he, some things that I looked at and why do you bless the Lord? And I'm addicted. I, I, I am. I, can't, I meet up with it. My mom tells me all the time. And she says, son, you've got to slow down. You've you got to take care. I said, mom, I can't. People are dying lost all over this country and going to hell. And, and, and we go and we try to tell them that God is the only way that they can make it out of this life. So I bless the Lord, number one, this morning because He is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. First John 4, 9, In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. You know, preachers and congregation, I still believe this this morning. John 3, 16 will still get the job done. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now there's some that would lead you to believe that the day you were born, God predetermined whether you're going to be saved or lost. Now don't misunderstand the preacher. I believe in the sovereignty of God. I believe God knows all things. But the sovereignty of God does not dictate whether or not a person is born again or they leave this world lost. What do you mean? Well, if it had been that way, the Bible would have said, For God so loved the elect, or God so loved the chosen, or He would have said, all you chosen, bring your cares. All you elect, bring your cares. But that ain't what the Bible said. The Bible said, whosoever believeth in Me should not perish but have everlasting life. He is the Son of God, born of a woman, yet without sin. I don't know about you, but that makes me shouting happy right there that I'm acquainted with one. I've been born into the family of God. He 
who knew no sin was made to be sin that I might be made the righteousness of God. Now let me interpret that in Kentucky preaching. He became what I was so I can become who He is. Oh, glory to God. Bless His name. He is the Son of God. There ain't no other one. Now I do believe God has a set of twins. Somebody said, where'd you get that? Grace and mercy. Amen. That's, that's just what I call them. And somebody said, where'd you find that? It's in the Bible. I just call them God's twins because, bless the Lord, they've helped me along this journey. And you, you ain't going to go long till they'll help you along the journey. Oh, He is. The Son of God. Some say He was just a teacher. Some say He was just a prophet. He was all them things. But so much more. He was God in flesh. Amen. I don't know about you, but had He not come, you and I would be destined for a devil's hell. And thank God on the morning when He rose from the dead, He said, I'm He who is alive and dead. Behold, I'm alive and alive forevermore. I've got the keys of hell. And a death, and as I live, ye shall live also. Somebody said, Who is he, preacher? I'm glad you asked. He is the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and the morning star. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and he's the last. He's the A and he's the Z. Before there ever was a was, he was. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He always has been and he always will be. I say bless His name. It do us good just to lift up our hands and say bless you God for sending your Son Woo! that we might live. Now let me get back to dignification here. I can't help it. It just gets on me, boys. And I just, you don't want me to explode. That'd be a mess. <laughs> Amen. I was at one place, got three sheets in the Holy Ghost. Even took my coat off. Fellow outside, it was a tough place too. Fellow met me outside. He said, "Son, God ain't deaf." I said, "I know it, but He's a long way from here." <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Say "Amen, right there, boys." <laughs> I just said what you all think and won't say it. Say amen. He is the Son of God. There ain't none like Him. He's the Beloved. He is the Blessed One. He is what you and I need. Bless God. We need to preach on Calvary. We need to teach on Calvary. And we need to visit Calvary and let God know how much we appreciate Him. Woo, hallelujah. I'm feeling better if you ain't noticed. He is the Son of God. Not only that, He is the sacrifice for sin. He is the sacrifice for sin. Now, not a sacrifice. He's the sacrifice for sins. Let's just settle something right here. The sin debt has already been taken care of. It's not a sin question. It's a son question. Because when he died on Calvary, see God is not only just, but he is holy. And sin was only met with death. Was the only thing but God is holy. And in his justness, Jesus when he died on the cross he died in our place that suffices the justice of God but when they pierced his side and may I tell you his blood was not spilt I'm, the word spilt means wasted or an accident can I tell you a Calvary by no way was an accident Calvary was no way uh, wasted. Uh, it was prophesied throughout the Bible. Uh, and bless God that that day would come, uh, that He would go to the old rugged cross. Uh, and God said this, uh, He made Him a little lower than the angels, uh, even to the suffering of death. Uh, but now God had highly exalted Him whoo, and given Him a name above all other names. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should come confess to the glory of God. I hear the writer in Hebrews chapter 9 I begin to write like this in verse 24. For Christ hath not entered into the holy places made by hand which are the figures of the true but now into heaven itself and not that he should often appear as a priest before but now in the end times has he 
appeared, putting away sin by the sacrifice of Himself. For as it's once upon Him unto man to die after this judgment, but unto us woo, that look to Him shall He appear a second time without sin unto salvation. I say, blessed be His name. For we know if the earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building eternal in the heavens not made by hand. Therefore we do groan to be clothed with our heavenly body. For as we are born the earthly image, we shall also bear the heavenly to be absent from this body who is to be present with the Lord. Though the tree be cut down and the stalk thereof dieth in the earth, yet at the sin of water it shall bud and bring forth poles as a plant. Again man dieth and wasteth away. And where is he? Oh, that thou would hide me in the grave until thy wrath be passed. If a man die, shall he live again? All the appointed days of my life will I wait for my change. Thou shalt call my name and I shall answer him. For the Lord knoweth the path in which I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. For I know my Redeemer liveth and shall stand upon the earth in the latter days. And though the skin worms devour my body again in my flesh, I shall see God. My brethren, I would not have you be ignorant concerning those who are asleep, that you sorrow not as others who have no hope. For if we believe God raised Jesus from the dead, even also them who are asleep in Christ, shall God bring with Him. I saw your mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. For in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the trump of God shall sound. The dead shall rise first. And we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall be caught up in the air to meet the Lord. And so shall we ever be with Him. I say, bless the Lord O oh my soul. He's the sacrifice for sin. Woo! Hallelujah. Uh, John said, over oh, yonder in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne written with him, a book on the back side was sealed with seven seals thereof. And I heard a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is able to open the book and loose the seals? And look thereon. John said they wasn't nobody in heaven. They wasn't nobody in earth. They wasn't nobody beneath the earth. They didn't look. God already knew that His darling Son would go. And John said, I sat weeping. But He said, as I sat weeping, an elder cried unto me and said, Weep not, John. Woo! For behold, the lion and the tribe of Judah, out of the root of David, one hath prevailed. Who's able? Here it is, boys. Who's able to open the book and loose the seers thereof? And I, John Saul, in the midst of the throne of Lamb, having been slain before the foundation of the world, and I saw the twenty and four elders as they bowed before him and said, Glory and power and honor is given unto thee. Then I'm over in chapter 7. He said, I saw and lo, a number that no man can number. And an elder said, Sir, who are these? He said, Surely thou knowest these are they who are they are us who have come up through great tribulation having washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb and here it is they sang a song I am redeemed bless His name He is the sacrifice for sin now where are we not only is He the sacrifice for sin, He's a Savior to the sinner. Huh? 
He's a Savior to the sinner who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Brother Derek seen it several years ago. That word all kind of jumped off the page at me. Boy, I spent some hours and time looking for something. I just knew I was going to wow the people with that little word all. Buddy, I read after everybody I thought had anything to read after. Hey, some of you don't need to be reading. They're as lost as a duck in the desert. Hey, man, they don't know if the Lord was crucified or the Indians scalped him. Hey, man, you don't have to read all the very many chapters to realize if they got it or not. Hold on a minute. Woo, preach on, preacher. See, I'm an evangelist. I can do that. I'm a hurricane preacher. Go in, blow up, and blow out. <laughs> hey, man, let the rest remain. Hey, listen, he is the Savior to the sinner. Notice Calvary. Calvary showed us God's hatred for sin. His, his wrath and judgment was displayed on Calvary in the death of his son. But notice, not only did he show us his hatred for sin, in that same situation, he showed us how he loved the sinner. Huh? How he loved the sinner. I, I, I got folks, I, listen, this is the truth, and this is sad, and I, I'm not being mean. I'm just being honest. I, I've got friends that if they died right now, they'd probably be lost. That helped me in my ministry more than a lot of people do in the church. And I tell them, listen, oh, I take their offering. Yeah, I tell them the devil's had that money long enough. We need to use that for the glory of God. Somebody said, how do you know where they get it? I didn't care where they got it. I just knowed where it was going. <laughs> how do you do that? Help, man. I'm not pitiful. I ain't broke. I ain't even bent too bad. But I'll tell you this. For the last five years, me and Sister Blanton, every piece of bread that we eat is because somebody give us a piece of money that we could buy it. We don't have no underwriting. Bless God, we have to pray it in. And we give away more than we keep. How much is enough, folks? Let me tell you something. One fellow the other day, Brother Derek, I... Something that, that burns me up. Now, I can't, that, that's a hillbilly term. I mean, it just burns me up. If you've got a problem with me, that's all right. Just get me over to the side and we'll talk about it. But don't get me in front of some of my peers and start that trash. One fellow come up to me. He, and there's some guys standing around there. He pointed at me. He said, hey, preacher, you're getting rich out here, ain't you? I said, no, sir. I was being real Christian-like, Billy. I said, no, sir. No, I'm not. Oh, he said uh, the second time. I thought that would suffice him, but no. He said the second time, Preacher, hey, you can leave, boys. He's getting rich out here uh, on this road. I said, no, sir, you're wrong. And finally, he said it the third time. Now, bless God, you say something to me the third time, I'm expecting, you're expecting a reply. <laughs> Amen. Now, and, and I'll just tell you what I told him, and I didn't even pray about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. There's some things you don't even have to pray about. It's just right. I looked him square in the eye. I didn't raise my hand. I didn't point my finger. I said, sir, you're wrong. He said, oh, I've watched people come by. Everybody hands you a piece of money. Or they'll hand you a check. Or they'll put something in that donation. I said, you're wrong. He said, how am I wrong? I said, well, you're wrong is this. I was rich before I got here. Hey. Oh, hallelujah. Hey. What do you mean, brother? My father owns the cattle of a thousand. And hills and he owns the hills that they stand on and I said brother the best thing you better pray is God don't make you give me some money because he'll make you crawl if he tells you to best thing you can do is walk the other way I'm just here to tell you I'm tired of back to back seat I'm tired of having to bow my head I'm God's son and what I get I'm not ashamed of because God sends it I'm telling you he is a savior to the sinners You say, how do you, how do you bring physical dollars into it? Well, 
I don't know my side, but back years ago, Brother Dan Patrick might know this fella. He lived in the area where my wife's from, Marthy, Kentucky. Not Martha, Marthy, Kentucky. You say you don't know how to say it. No, you don't know how to say it. My mama ranch stuff with water. Ranch. She ranches it. Hey, Amen. That's good hillbilly preaching right there. You go north, they don't even know what a poke is. Or a sack either. Or a bag. They think the bag's the one you got with you. That ain't, that's far from the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I got a good one. Yeah. Brother Joe said, how's Miss Blanton doing? I said, bless God, she's doing good. She said, is she here? Somebody, maybe it was somebody else after me. I said, is she here? I said, I'm here, ain't I? They said, yeah. I said, well, bless God, if she wasn't here, they wouldn't even want me to come up. <laughs> hey, man. Her mama, her grandma would say it would have been a shame to have ruined two houses with you folks. This old guy, I kept inviting him to church. Kept inviting him to church. We'd go around to the store. On, I worked for Ash and Oil Production. Dug, drilled oil wells and fixed them. Yeah, I, I know how to work. I can make money. And God said, no, you just do what I tell you. I'll take care of you. Ooh. Boy, and look up here. <laughs> He's been good to this preacher. Not frivolous. I just do what I can with what I got. And listen, I walked in there one day, and they'd make you a ham sandwich that tall. I mean, bless God. Chip tan, made her in mayonnaise. Well, God made anything better than that right there. He kept it for himself. We'd go around there and eat on lunch break. And by we, we kept a case, a box, 36 bars, zag nuts right in our truck. That's our best candy bar ever made, bless God. I'm paying for it now. Take three or four shots a day because of it. But it was good then. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Doctor said, you got diabetes. He said, what do you say to that? I said, I'm getting sweeter as the days go by. I'm getting, <laughs> amen. There's a 99% chance if I can open my mouth and close it, when I leave this world, I'll have a good taste in my mouth. Amen. Some of y'all laughing. I look at you. Yeah. It's amazing, boy. We'll preach on that other stuff. We'll preach on that backer and liquor. And, and it's wrong. But boy, you never hear about eating three chickens. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. huh? Oh, I, I, I'm not fat. I'm just swollen. Yeah, hello. <laughs> It ain't no beer belly. It's a chicken coop, bless God. Hallelujah. Let me rest you assured of this right here. Peter didn't get mad because the rooster crowed. Peter got mad because the Lord healed his mother-in-law. Amen. So that old fellow there, I went in. He's in heaven now. Just went to heaven a year or so ago. I went in. I looked at him. called his name. I said, how you doing, pal? I called his name. I didn't say pal. I said, said his name. He said, I'm doing good. I said, we're having revival over here behind the store at the Elizabeth Church. I said, would you come? He said, give me $10. Bless God, I pulled my wallet out and counted him out, 10 $1 bill. I said, there, see you tonight, and left. Now, there's one thing about a lot of Kentucky people. The only thing they got that's worth much is their word. They may paint the town red tomorrow night, but if they get caught, they'll confess it up. That night he showed up. God got a hold of him. Now, he didn't get saved that night, but that was the start, and he finally got saved. Amen. So see, let me tell you something. You can use anything God gives you to the advantage of seeing somebody except Christ. But no, here's our problem in the church. Bless God, the family down the road is going to starve to death before we can have a little board meeting to decide whether or not we're going to give them $20 for a sack of groceries. Preach on, preacher. You know I'm telling the truth. You robbing God with your tithes and offerings? Expect me to pray with you. I may pray, but I ain't closing my eyes. You pray. You rob God. You rob me. Amen. 
You know it's the truth. Best way to figure out goats in the church. <laughs> well, I, I'm plowing somebody's corn. <laughs> I, I pastored 22 years. I've been around the teacup far enough to find a handle. You can pick them out every time. They only showed up most time for business meeting. <laughs> yeah, that's about time they showed up. Church wanting to do something good, wanting to help somebody or help a mission, do something like that. And they'll come to church, and here's how you figure them out. They'll go to vote on it, and they'll go, nah, nah, no. Oh, no. Why, Lord, we can't do that. Have you seen the electric rates every night? Hey, you give God something, He'll give you more. Prove it. I, I can't prove this, but it's pretty good. Thanks for pretty good preaching. That little boy gives the Lord that lunch. Huh? Five loaves and two fishes. You ever figured out what he done with them 12 baskets of food? Now, here's how I think about it. You can say what you want to. You say you can't prove it happened. You can't prove it didn't. I believe they took them down there and put them on that boy's porch. I believe they gave them back to that little boy. Somebody said, why would you say that? Because bless God, you ain't never going to give God nothing that he don't give you back more than you ever dreamed you could have. I wonder what his mama thought. <laughs> when she come out on the porch and there's all them groceries. That little boy, I, I, she's like my, if I've been like my boy, I'm thinking, oh, Lord, the law will be here. I mean, but where, boy, where'd you get that stuff? Where'd that come from? Hey, mama, here's all I can tell you. Here's all I can tell you. You know that fellow up there on the side of the hill? Man, that guy can preach. He said, I'm telling you that I ain't never heard nobody speak like that fellow up there on the side of the hill. And, and said, he's getting close uh, to the evening meal. And, and said, nobody seemed to have nothing. And they was a squirmishing around. There's about 5,000 of men. They didn't even count me. I wasn't even counted. <laughs> Ooh, but I had what the Lord needed. <laughs> hey, mm, mm, hey, man, right there. And bless God. said, he come. One of these fellows come over and said, could I have your lunch? He said, I give it to him. He said, I give him my lunch. And here's what I got left over. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah to God. I'm here to tell you God's good. Yes. He'll save the sinners if we'll show them that there's something worth being saved about. Yes. Most Baptists you meet anymore, you in the Walmart, you hoping you got on a camouflage suit and one of them camouflage hoods you can pull down over your head because you ain't wanting to talk to them. Because you got to know, you know, you got to ask them how they are, and it's an organ recital 45 minutes later. <laughs> God's good to us. Bless the Lord. Listen, He's the Son of God. Sacrifice for sin, Savior to the sinner. But I like this the best. He's a sufficient supplier. He's a sufficient supplier. I usually don't tell a lot of stories, but I'm going to close with this because Brother David brought, when he said, some things you've got to live through for it to really move you. My wife and I met at a church. She came to the church I was raised in to see me. We had a little mutual friend and she had told her about me and she, I guess she came to see if it was true. And uh, must have been enough of it because 32 years later she's still with me. I was playing the piano singing the congregational songs. Looked back through the crowd and I saw her sitting there you can say what you want to. I don't really care what you believe. I was there. The Holy Spirit. I'm playing the piano. The Holy Spirit says, that's your wife. So I picked her up about a quarter of a notch. I said, looks good to me. <laughs> Amen. Two weeks later, I asked her to marry me. Two months from that day, we stood before God and exchanged our vows. And promised each other that no matter what come, we would always consult God. And whatever God said, whoever was right and whoever was wrong, we would be honest and just make this marriage work. Mm. And buddy, I'm going to tell you something. Now, we don't argue. We don't argue. We just, uh, <clears throat> well, let me see, how's the best way to say it? We just resolve. Now, I'll be honest with you. You can probably hear us three or four blocks down the road resolving sometimes, but, <laughs> but we don't argue. And, and God's blessed us. 
We got married and right after Thanksgiving, the December of the year later, God blessed us with a little boy. Oh, I love him. And they've given us two grandkids. I wish that I had them grandkids first. <laughs> but <laughs> that ain't the way it works. Oh. We were, we were in Huntington, West Virginia. Doing a, back then it was cassettes. <laughs> I have to tell my age, I, I really ain't old, I'm just high mileage. <laughs> and, and my boy, my, my wife's mom and dad was watching him that day. Brother Dan knows my wife's parents. And immediately, he, I mean just in the, like a snap of a finger, he took ill. He could not move his head, nowhere. Nowhere. I'm talking about a sufficient supply. We had just gotten done, so we... Loaded him in the car, took him back to where we lived and directly to the hospital, went into the ER. They took him in and I watched my wife hold my baby. Him crying for three and a half hours all the way there. They finally give him some stuff to relax him. And they come in and they've done some tests and then they called us in and set us down. And the doctor said, Mr. and Mrs. Blanton said, uh, we hate to tell you this, but said, uh, we're pretty sure your son's got spinal meningitis. Well, I didn't know what that word meant other than the death sentence that all I'd ever heard. And I can't tell you how broke my heart was. I mean, it was crushed. And I ain't going to tell you I was real spiritual at that moment. Because I said, Lord, how can this be? And we're running all over the country. We're trying our best to win people to the Lord. How can this be? Then I thought, well, how can it not be? I'm no different than anybody else. Reigns on the just and the unjust. So they said, we're going to do some things and try to make him comfortable. The doctors left, and I said, I'll be back. I went out in the Lobby and went into the men's restroom. Took that little wood block that they scotched them doors open with and I scotched it to where nobody could get in. Probably wasn't sanitary, or I, but I wasn't thinking about that stuff. And I got on my hands and knees in that bathroom floor. And I cried out to the Son of God. And I told him I didn't understand. Somebody said, you should not question God. The Lord did. Why hast thou forsaken? If that ain't a question, I ain't never heard one. But I said, Lord, I want to promise you this. We love that boy. You know it. We'd love to raise that boy. He's brought so much joy to our life. But we want you to know, I said, I want you to know this. If you choose to take him, we're going to thank you for what time we've had with him. And I'm still going to go. And I'll still preach. And I'll still sing no matter where they call. Because as much as I love him, I love you more. Because you're my Savior. Boy, I, I laid there and I wept for a minute. Some more than that. but And finally, all of a sudden, I don't know if you've ever had this to happen. I hope so. Man, I felt that warm breath of heaven <clears throat> fill my body. It came from the inside out, Jim. And I knew he was going to be all right. I knew it. Son, I got up, washed my hands, walked out there. And about that time, they called us back in there. Bless the Lord. The doctor sat us down and said, we're sorry to tell you this. And I thought, oh, no, it can't get worse. They said, we were wrong. <laughs> I said, wrong? They said, well, yes, said, it, we've discovered it's just a little virus. We'll give him this pills right here, and, and probably by tomorrow night you'll be having to tie him back down. Boy, I sat there, and I just wept. If you ever get in a service and my wife goes to shouting, just watch out. She'll raise the roof off the place. She ain't done it a whole lot, but that was one day. <laughs> she had something to shout about. We got happy. 
She looked at me. She said, ain't you going to shout? I said, oh, no. I shouted back in the bathroom. <laughs> I knew it was all right. And bless God, he's 30, be 32, I guess. Got two babies. He make two of me. He's a big boy. God's good. I'm talking he's a sufficient supplier. Here, I'll say this, and I'm done. The hardest thing I ever did in my life and still sometimes I'd struggle doing it. It's taking my hands off of it and just letting God have it. It's the toughest thing I ever do. And sometimes I think I can do it. But the truth is, I can't. And you've been trying to do it. But the truth is, you can't. But I've got good news. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all of his benefits. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding, but in all thy ways. There's that word again. Acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed.